Hey gorgeous, welcome to Aligned Ascension. Frequency attunement, human design, and business energetics. I'm Christy Avis. This is your Aligned Ascension. Oh my god. Hello, hello, hello. Oh my gosh, okay. I am fucking excited. If you have children, hide them. I cuss a lot. <laughs> It's, it's, it's expressive. It's so important. We are talking about the sacral. Welcome to the Tapped In Masterclass. This is going to be lit. This is going to be fire. This is going to really help you tap into your sacral, realize the blocks from you tapping into your sacral. And this is, this makes me so sad that Facebook is like not allowing us to use music because if I had music playing, the vibe would be sexy. The vibe would be fun. We are stepping into our power here. This is all about pleasure and desire and it is going to be so so much fun you guys excited i'm gonna pull a card for us because i feel like that's a really good way to set the vibe just imagine some sexy music in the background someday facebook has to lift that like with usage rights like i would pay to be able to play music for you guys especially for a sacral embodiment masterclass. like duh uh, so good to see you. Hi, Yvonne. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Emily. Hi, Nicole. Oh my gosh. So good to see everybody. Oh, that's the one. That is the one. Ah, the age of light. You have been training for this for lifetimes. So this is so, so important, right? This makes so much sense because human design is so huge in the world right now. And it's going to get even bigger and bigger and bigger. And I promise you the fact that you are at this masterclass, it means you are meant to embody your human design. It means that you are meant to carry the ascension of humans forward by being tapped into your desires and actually creating a life you desire to live. This is really, really important, right? If you are called to it, it is meant for you. And this is, this is the vibe, right? This is the vibe. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. So I have some notes here to make sure I don't get off track because you know me, I'm a manifesting generator. I'm a 5-1 mini gen. And I have been doing sacral embodiment for probably seven or eight months. I've learned human design. I thought I was a projector for three years. Oh my God, could you imagine? Sarah, are you a gen or a mini gen? But I'm a 5-1 mini gen, and this is a huge piece of what we're going to be talking about today is intellectualizing embodiment, because when you intellectualize embodiment, you never learn how to tap in. You never learn how it feels, and this is so, so important. For those of you who don't know me, I, hi, I'm Christy, 5-1 mini gen, and this is my life's work. My life's work is alignment, human design, and mindset, and I came from a place of being burnt out looking outside of me for all of the answers. And I see so many people doing this and the answers are all within us. They're all within our body. And this is what human design gives us the permission to do is it gives us the permission to step into our power. Because when we are looking outside of ourselves for everything, for the answers, for permission, for our power, we are going to continue to flounder. We're going to continue to create misalignment within our lives. And when we create misalignment within our lives, we don't call in the things we desire our auras will actually shrink. Our auras are what calls in the things we want and we desire. And when you're in alignment with your human design, that's when you get to powerfully call things in. So I wanna talk about alignment really quickly because if you're new to the human design world and you're new to kind of this concept of being in alignment with your strategy and your authority as a generator or a manifesting generator, Alignment is the buzzword of the coaching world. It is everything. And everybody's always talking about like, get into alignment. Just, just listen to your gut, get into alignment. And how many people are, how many of you were sick of hearing get into alignment? And this is the secret sauce. Like we can do a lot through the generalized alignment of believing in our desires. But when you tap into desire from a place that works with your actual DNA genetic blueprint of how you are meant to call things into your life, I swear whatever has worked for 
for you will work for you 10 times better because this is how your actual aura and body and DNA and genetic coding work. And so that's a huge, huge piece of this is getting into alignment in a way that's meant for you, not meant for her, not meant for them, but for you because you have a really powerful alignment and you have a really powerful internal guidance system waiting to guide you. You just have to tap into it. it. It's already there. It's not broken. There's just a lot of conditioning for all of us. Hi, Julia. So good to see you. Let me see, see more. Sarah says, yeah, wow. Listening to my design, I'm totally having a a 180 career overhaul. Yeah. It wasn't until I got completely in my body that I could fully see what I'm meant to do. Literally. And this is a huge piece because I cannot talk to you about the sacral, about sacral embodiment without getting into conditioning because we are so, so conditioned, especially as generators and manifesting generators on the shoulds, right? Like we are shoulding ourselves away. And let me tell you, this is really difficult because even though 66% of the entire world is generators and manifesting generators, cool fact, whatever, it would make sense that we would be in a generator's world, but we are not. We are actually in a manifester's world. And this is really confusing for generators and manifesting generators because it's like our whole lives, this whole society has, what have they told us while we're growing up? Just go do it, make it happen. If you want it, you have to do it. Do the work, just do it. Follow your dreams, chase your dreams. What has this done to us? This is literally put our alignment, it has turned our alignment off. It has turned our magnets off and we are out there forcing shit to happen and we are out of alignment. Because let me tell you, the magic of being a generator or a manifesting generator is the universe is trying to fucking serenade you. It wants to give you everything you desire. And when we are forcing and we are pushing and we are trying to just do it and make it happen, we'd like turn the universe off because it's trying to, court you. It's trying to give you what you want. You are meant to live a life of desire and being in desire. And this is just as true for the things you don't want. How beautiful is it to get a gift that you don't want and being able to say, actually, no, I don't want that. This is what I'd rather want instead. The yeses and the nos, the good and the things you don't want are just as important for generators and manifesting generators. And we are going to tap into that. So who's excited? Who's excited? Who's excited? I'm, I'm really excited. If I scream and squeal, sorry, if you're wearing headphones, it's, it's fine. Hi, Yolanda. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. So good to see you. I am so, so excited. And at the end of this, I'm gonna tell you guys a way you can stay in this energy, but I am telling you this masterclass is not to sell you into the next offer. This masterclass is to get deep transformation here and now. And that is the that is the heart of what I want to do. Every single time before I hop on one of these calls, I say a prayer to the universe. I'm like, God, give me these people and let me return to the you to them even better. This is such an important part of this. I want you to get transformation here. And if you utilize the things in here, they're going to change your life. And if you want to stay in this energy, I have something so incredible for you guys. And I'm so, so, so excited. Ah! Oh my gosh, Nicole. Yes, we are in the vibe. Okay, let's talk about the sacral because no matter what, you are either an emotional authority or a sacral authority if you are a gen or a mani gen. And the sacral is, is magic, right? Because the mind is not an authority. And this is the thing, like we are taught our whole lives to be in this place of logic, this place of pros and cons, this place of, is this going to work or isn't this going to work? Is this going to work based on my income? Is this going to work based on the things, the external circumstances showing me that this is possible? Is this going to work based on what people are telling me is possible? But the mind is not an authority. Our mind is not meant to make decisions for us. Sacral authority, sacral authority. Yep, I'm a sacral authority as well. 
And for emotional authorities, I'm not going to dive into the specifics of emotional authorities, but if you're an emotional authority, your sacral is backing up what is happening with your emotional waves. You're going to get to that pure place of desire after you go through your emotional waves, and that's a normal thing. But you still have the ability to tap into this power. You absolutely, just as much as a sacral authority, get to tap into this really powerful place of being in desire. And even though you're going through emotional waves, your sacral is communicating with the solar plexus. Like it's a thing. So don't discredit anything I say, because no matter what, your your sacral is telling you what you desire and you get to tap into this power regardless of if you're a sacral or an emotional authority. So logic is not an authority. Your authority is the thing that is telling you what to do. It's making decisions for you. And our sacral is leading us by desire, which is so, so important. And so this is the center on money, sex, and power. This is such a vibe because this is literally your magnetism. And what happens when you try to logic, when you try to force, is you turn off the magnet. You turn off the magnet and like if the universe is trying to serenade us and we are doing this, we we can't see anything. We're not open to receiving and our minds are good. Our minds are really important for processing information. They're really important for holding information and helping us remember things, but we should not be making decisions for from up here. And when I get into the part about intellectualizing embodiment, I'm going to teach you how to get out of here. But you will feel if you're in here, you will feel that kind of just like heaviness on your head if you are making all of your decisions from your mind instead of from your body. So it's really about getting tapped into that power of this is my center of desire and I get to desire from this place and I don't have to pull logic into this because you don't, you literally don't. And there is so, 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 so much untapped power for gens and many gens that we are just now starting to tap into. And this is something that's going to keep being, keep happening. We're going to start collectively tapping into this power and it is scary for the world, right? Because the, the world has wanted us to play in logic. The world has wanted us and taught us to play in pros and cons list. It is scary when somebody is tapped into their desires, making these decisions and you're like, oh, whoa, what the heck is this person doing? And this is the path. This is you following your highest soul path when you are on desire. Because every desire that comes through you is for you. Anything you could desire, you can have. You would not have the desire if it wasn't meant for you. I do not have the desire to go skydiving because that is not something that is part of me, but other people do. We all have unique desires within us. I have the desire to quit my nine to five and be a coach. Now I have that desire. I followed my sacral in these things. And when you follow your sacral, that is when you turn your magnetism on. Because I always say, you could do one aligned action with your sacral, listening to your power, listening to your desire, and it would be more powerful than hundreds of thousands of unaligned actions. The pure means you have the 3420 channel. So with the 3420 channel, that's a that's a channel directly from the sacral to the throat. So that just means that you speak a lot about your desires and you might get this kind of uh uh-huh or uh uh-uh coming through when your desires are coming very strongly from your sacral and you don't have a lot of blockage within your throat chakra. This is something that was actually, Yolanda, this is a really, really great question because with that pure Manny Jet, if you have a lot of shit going on within your throat chakra, you might not get that uh uh-huh, uh-uh. It may take some clearing of that chakra to be able to feel that but you have this powerful ability to speak on your desires and your throat is actually telling you what you do and don't desire. For anybody else who's a pure Manny Gen, that is the case as well. So there is major, major untapped potential. So when it comes to reconnecting to our sacral, it has to be a lot, there's a lot of things. We have to trust it. We have to understand that we are led by it. And I'm going to talk about trust because we make trust like this thing where it's like, 
okay, but how? Okay, but how do I trust? Nah, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. And it's really about feeling it. We want to dive into the feeling of it because if you can't feel your sacral, you're not being led by your sacral. And there's so much conditioning on us that a lot of times we can't feel our gut instinct. We can't feel if it's a yes or if it's a no. And so many people will be like, okay, I can tell if it's a yes or a no for Qdoba or Chipotle, but when it comes to if I need to pivot my business, I can't tell. And when you are not practiced in the smaller decisions, the bigger decisions where your head really wants to take you up into logic and make you think, oh my gosh, pros and cons list, am I going to die? Because your head is trying to protect you. If you aren't tapped into those smaller decisions, how are these huge decisions going to be, how are you going to be able to feel them? How are you going to be able to feel them? So it's really, really tapping into what these yeses and these noes feel like. Because I'm going to talk about what happens when you start to feel what your yeses and noes feel like. And when you ignore them. And when you go against what your yes and no said, what's going to happen? And when you are in alignment with your yeses and your noes, your life is going to blow you away. It's going to blow you away. So if you are a generator or a manifesting generator, I'm sure that you've heard that your strategy is to respond. So I want to talk really quickly about this because I get so, so many questions of like, well, I want to do this thing. How do I respond? I want to, I want to like launch a program. How do I respond? I want this thing. I want it. How do I respond? And what a lot of generators and manifesting generators will do when they do not understand their human design and they're not tapped in is they will go make it happen. They will go force it. And what happens is when you do this, this is so, so crazy, is that you actually send a ripple of chaos out into the universe because of the misalignment. So this is the thing with responding, right? We, were, we are literally always responding. And when people say, oh, I don't know how to respond. Like, am I supposed to sit in a corner? No, the universe doesn't want you sitting in a corner. It's trying to serenade you. Like you get to do things, but you are constantly, constantly responding to your environment. And if you feel like you are not responding, it is because you have narrowed your vision. It is like you are looking through a microscope at the thing you want and you have not spread your awareness to all of the possibility. Hi, Katarina. So good to see you. So you have not, you are basically dimming your ability to see. So part of what being a generator or a manifesting generator is, is opening yourself up opening yourself up to the possibility of receiving and receiving in ways that you didn't think were the way you wanted to receive. And this is so powerful, right? Because when we do this, we are not open to receiving. And so when you are feeling like you are not responding as a generator or a manifesting generator, you are, you're just narrow visioned. I am responding to the sun coming through the window right now. That is making me feel super happy. I am responding to my cat being crazy over there. That is making me super not happy. Like I can feel the sacral responses of yes and no and yes and no. But if I was only focused on being here and I didn't see any of your comments, I dim the possibility of being able to respond to you, to be able to answer you, answer your questions. And this is the same with life. If I am so obsessed with a launch that I'm having, if I am so obsessed with this thing, I am closing and narrowing my vision and limiting my ability to respond to everything around me because there are millions and millions of things to respond to. Yes. Funny you mentioned that I'm just <laughs> I'm just wanting to launch a program. Yeah. So when you're when you're launching your program, it's like you get to respond to the feeling of money. You get to respond to the feeling of clients, both separate, right? Because we don't want to have conditional desires where it's like, I want clients because I want money. I want clients because I want to feel worthy. We want to have these separate desires because they get to be separate. They don't have to be conditional but really tap into that. Brittany, I'm responding to this class. Strong, yes, yes, you can feel it. You can feel that like just 
feeling of being in it, being in your sacral. And it's so, so good. And not initiating doesn't mean you can't do anything. It's just about loosening your grip of control. Because if you are like this, if your hands are like this, can the universe give you anything? No, like you have to hold on loosely. And this is where I'm going to go into trust because so many people ask me like, and I'm going to get into the, how the sacral kind of feels and how you can do exercises with it. But so many people ask me, it's like, how do I trust? Is there a question? And this is good. I like, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but there is there a question that is more out of your power than how do I trust? You decide. That's it. That's literally it. You decide that you are trusting. You decide that you are divinely led. Because whatever you decide, the power of decision cannot be understated here. Like the power of deciding that you trust and deciding that this is going to work for you, there is nothing that is going to change your life more than the power of your decision. And trusting comes from believing that this is working for you. Because how is listening to your sacral going to work for you if you believe the whole time that you are doing it wrong? It's not. So it's tapping into that internal power of, I believe that this is working for me. I believe that my sacral is leading me. And you get to tap into trust by looking at what has worked and what hasn't worked. Because your history, the things that you have gone through in your life, those are powerful indicators of what it looks like to trust and not to trust. I'm sure you all remember a time when you didn't trust and things went shit. And I'm sure you remember a time when you did something crazy that was in alignment and your whole life changed because of it. I remember there was this there there was this one time where and this is this is about pulling your your trust into your head, right? There was this one time where I wanted to buy my fiance a computer. And it was it was right around Christmas time. And this was when I was still working a nine to five. And I was just tapping in and listening to my sacral. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go buy him the computer today. And something weird happened. I felt a drop. I felt that drop of like, oh, that was a no. And what happened is my head took over so quickly. My head was like, we have the money. You want to get him this gift. You want to get him this gift. You are just nervous. That's why you felt that little bit of a drop. You're just nervous because you have to spend $2,000 on this really awesome gaming computer. And it's something that's just making you a little nervous. That little bit of a drop, that wasn't a drop. That was just butterflies in your stomach. I took it to logic. And your mind is going to want to do this. It is not going to make sense. It made zero sense to buy or not buy this computer because I had the money. It was a gift for my fiance. So you know what? I tricked myself. I said, no, that was just me being nervous. And I tapped into it even more and started feeling like, oh yeah, this is just nervous. My sick girl's definitely saying yes. So you know what? I drove to Best Buy. On the way, I almost got in a car accident because I slid on ice and I went to get gas because I was, I was running out of gas and both my headlights went out. Both of them went out before I got to the Best Buy store and it was about to be dark. So I was like, oh shit, I need to get home. Like, this is bad. And I went into my, into my brain and I was like, I definitely felt the no. I definitely felt it. But my mind was so convincing. It was so convincing in the fact that this didn't make any sense. And that's the thing. Our sacros don't play in logic. And you know what happened a week later? I joined a, a mastermind. And I would not have had the money to join that mastermind if I had bought the computer. That doesn't make sense. There is no way that I would have been able to logic myself through the fact that I was going to sign up for a mastermind a week later. That made zero sense. But that's the thing. Our bodies have an innate intelligence. They have this intelligence that is beyond anything our mind can even comprehend. And so we'll try to bring it into logic. We'll try to pull our consciousness up here and make it make sense and not be guided and led by our bodies that have this intelligence that we don't understand. Has that ever happened to you guys? Like, I'm curious. That one thing that was totally in alignment or out of alignment?
And another thing, like I've had, I've had clients who I've dreamed of working with and I just kind of have this feeling of like, oh yes, I desire working with that person. And then months later, they will come into my life and want to work with me. And that is how I got one of my, one of my million dollar clients. I wanted to work with her so much and she's a millionaire. And I was like, oh my gosh, this feels like way above my level. And I just had this desire and I took it out of my head. I pulled the logic out of, I have to be something to desire this because we don't want conditional desires. I just want pure desire. You just want pure desire because when you have pure desire and then you kind of let it be, that's when you have this opportunity to let the universe rearrange things for you. Because what happens is when you're trying to force shit, this is literally what it looks like. It's like you have this magnet within you. And when you try to force shit, you're like trying to force an opposing magnet to it. And what happens when you try to force opposing magnets together? It sends that ripple of chaos. That ripple of chaos into the universe where shit goes wrong. Shit doesn't work. Shit gets frustrating. And so what you do is when you are the magnet, you get to have the desire and then you get to lean back. You get to lean back and let the universe flip the magnet. Because when you are forcing things together, you are forcing the opposite ends of magnets together. But what the universe wants to do, and when you tap into your decision to trust, is the universe flips the magnet to where they just work together. They pull it in. They pull in the clients. They pull in the money. They pull in the relationship. up on these comments yes both ways yep yes and it doesn't make sense so I avoid trying to make sense of it yes exactly because when you start pulling these things and that's the thing that's why these bigger decisions if you're not tapped into your sacral for the smaller decisions your head's really gonna fight you when it's time to pivot your business when it's time to let a client go when it's time to go from four calls a month for your private clients to two calls, your mind is going to fight you on it because your brain wants to keep you safe. So if you aren't tapped in and in your power in these smaller decisions, how are you going to be able to understand and trust your sacral? So it's really looking at both the times things went right for you and the times things went wrong for you when you were tapped in and when you were not. So Yolanda says, so resisting what feels right to me, resisting what feels right to me makes messy things in my path. So it's not about resisting things that feel right to you, but yes, that will, that will, that's based in shoulds. So if you're resisting things because there's, you should be doing this or you, you want this thing and you're attaching like a a condition to it, that is absolutely going to introduce resistance. Like, I am thinking of taking some people out of my group because I feel some weird things from them, but I wonder if I am just acting from from emotions not correctly worked. So if you're ever worried, if you're, if you're worried about being tapped into emotions as opposed to what's in the sacral, you get to clear those things. Because Yolanda, you said you're a, you're a sacral authority, right? So you get to clear that emotion. And then you get to tap into if this is a yes or if this is a no. And if you don't know what your yeses and your noes feel like, that's a problem. So what you need to do is you need to do an exercise. And this exercise is going to change your guys' lives. And this is something, part of this is you want to make sure that you you are being. There is some doing with learning how to tap into your sacral and being in your power when it comes to your sacral, but you have to make sure that you are being. So with this, are you asking yourself yes, no questions? Do you know how they feel? Because sometimes when I am having trouble tapping in and I feel like I've got a lot of emotion going about a certain thing, because like recently I I had to drop a client and that that shit's hard for me, but there was no logical reason. There was no logical reason why, like she's an excellent, excellent client, but I had to tap into what my desire was, where I wanted to go. And my desire was saying drop, but I had to get in tune with my sacral first. And the way you do that is you ask yourself yes and no questions. And you get to lie to yourself to feel like if it's a no, like I will say, is my name Christy? Yeah, I can feel that yes. Am I excited about this masterclass? 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Is the sky green? Nope. And you get to feel the nuance of that in your body. This is a muscle. This is something that you practice because when you are practiced in your internal guidance system, that is the power of being able to tap in for these bigger decisions of, am I bringing too much emotion in this about kicking these people out of my group? I don't know because I haven't done the practice to feel the yes and to feel the no. And there is emotion tied to this masterclass for me. There is emotion tied to if I love my cat or not. But as you practice, as you ask yourself these yes and no questions, you will feel that you will feel that unique feeling for you. And I talk about this more like in, in other spaces, and I'm going to talk about this more with the program that I'm offering, but there are nuances. Like some people get the, uh, 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 some people get a rise and a fall. There are differences in how we tap in. There are differences. So if you are looking to everybody else to see how they are tapping in, it may be different for you because it feels different for us. We all, the, Human design is the science of differentiation. So we all have different ways that we really respond and don't respond. And we all have different conditioning that comes into play of, am I too emotional for doing this thing? Have I removed people before and gotten a weird response? Am I concerned about what people think of me as opposed to what my sacral is saying? Those things are your conditioning and those things will come in. And that's where we start playing up here. So my question here would be about when you can make the difference of intuition from the sacral and needing to do the inner work. I think that last part just answered that. Ivana, can it be the sacral response without the sound? Yep, absolutely. And this is a big thing where it could come into to blockages in the throat chakra if you're a, if you're a 3420 pure mani gen. And it could be not. Some people aren't as vocal with their, with their response. And so it's really tuning into what works for you. And that's why asking these yes and no questions is so, so important because you get to feel the nuance of what, what is for you. Because if you don't do this work, if you don't ask yourself these questions and then you go try to decide to pivot your business or decide if this man is the man that you are going to marry, you're going to be like, oh, holy shit, like I can't tell anything because this decision feels so big. And when it feels big and it feels scary, our consciousness goes up into our head. I knew my husband was the one was the one right away from this place. Yes. Yes, pure, pure sacral. Yep. Stasi, Stasia, Stasia. <laughs> I hear Kate say your name correctly. I want to make sure I'm saying it correctly ask myself questions. Yes, absolutely, Ivana. Okay, gorgeous. So this is this part is not the funnest part for a lot of people who are interested in getting tapped in and being in their sacral. And this part may call you out, but I love you and it's going to be okay. <laughs> so I could teach you literally everything about your human design. I could teach you your channels, your gates. I could teach you about your planetary transits, the people you're around and how they're affecting you. But this is the problem, right? Because when we start to intellectualize human design, it's not going to serve you. There is something powerful about being and being and doing as opposed to intellectualizing human design and intellectualizing the knowledge. And what happens is a lot of us whether you have a defined head center and an ajna or you do not, we like to get turned on by the information. We like to treat human design as a party trick as opposed to something we get to deeply attuned to within our body. So getting turned on by the information and seeking more and more information satisfies this part of us that keeps us safe from doing the deconditioning work. Stacia. Okay, Stacia. Yay. Thank you so much. Um, so let's see. A big piece of this is getting out of our head and into our body. <laughs> and when I say that statement, what will happen is so, so many people will be like, oh, okay, how do I do that? 
that's getting back into that how that's getting back into that intellectualizing human design because this is about embodiment right if you are not embodying these things if i teach you everything about your human design it's not going to serve you until you start being your human design being in that state in that state of responding and receiving and making sure that you're not initiating and you're tapped into what a yes and a no feels like because beyond that those things don't matter you could learn every channel but at that point are you doing the real work to be in your design or are you intellectualizing human design and this is this is that statement of getting out of your head and into your body can cause us to intellectualize right and this comes back to a huge piece of what gens and many gens struggle with is we are super super conditioned we are so conditioned from childhood because our parents didn't know about human design they didn't know what happens when you say no you get in trouble you get spanked and so what did that teach us that our no's weren't safe what happened when you were told to clean your room and it was a sacral no you'd say no and then your parents would tell you you go fucking do it anyway sorry clean your room oh you should be getting good grades you should go to the soccer practice even though you feel like you don't want to. And so what happens is we shut down and we stop listening to the power within us and we stop listening to our sacral because our parents didn't know how valuable our nose were. And so we, we learned that listening to ourselves and our bodies was not safe. And so what we did is we went up into our head. We went up into our head of, what will people think if I do this? Am I safe to do this? Should I do this? What if I say no to this? What's going to happen? Am I good at this? Should I do it anyway? I'm, I'm good at it. I don't love it, but I'm good. So, so I might as well do it. And we have all of these really, really big pieces of conditioning that are still there that are still guiding our decision-making because we have pulled it up here. Does anybody feel those? Those pieces of conditioning are really, really deep. My biggest thing is shoulds. Should I do this? What are people gonna think of me? Yep, should I do this or that? Is it safe to take this move? What's happened in the past when I've taken this move? What do my parents want me to do? What does my friends want me to do? What feels safe and logical? That desire is too big for me. These are all huge pieces of conditioning. And you know what conditioning does? It's like a veil. It puts this veil between the magnets. And so a huge piece of this is doing the deconditioning work so you can step into your power and step into your magnetism. Because I'm going to talk about auras and auras are so powerful. When you are in your design and you have removed the veils and you will never be completely deconditioned. But as you start to remove these pieces of shoulds and my desires are too big and I, I can't say no because they'll think this of me. When you start to remove those pieces, that's when you expand your aura. Yep, I know that. I feel should should be taken out of our vocabulary. Yeah, it's like shitting on yourself. Like don't should on yourself. Don't shit on yourself. <laughs> That's how I see shoulds. Absolutely. So intellectualizing HD and alignment takes us out of the being. It takes us out of the being and puts us into the doing. And the doing can involve, like you obviously have to do things to get into alignment, but the doing of getting more information, the doing of digging deeper into the pieces of your design without ever, ever integrating the power of actually practicing what your sacral feels like, actually doing the deconditioning. When you stop intellectualizing human design, and this is why people love to do it. They love to search for more information. They love to get in their head centers because when you stop intellectualizing and you start being in your design, your shit is going to come up. 
the shit that tells you you're not good enough, the shit that tells you your desires are too big, the shit where you're attaching desires to other desires and making things conditional. Because when you're making things conditional, those are not true desires. The true desire is underneath. I can have this once I get this. That's a problem. So that's why people avoid doing the work of being in their human design, because as soon as you do, your shit will come up. The things that you need to work through, those things come up. And when I first started learning human design, like a long time ago, I went for more and I went for more and I learned all the channels and I learned that my fiance has a storyteller channel and I learned that I have a creativity channel and I used human design as a party trick and I never was tapping in. I wasn't truly tapping in. I thought it was cool. I thought it was like, oh yeah, cool. My sacral can make decisions for me. Tell me what this channel means. Tell me what happens when I get in a room with somebody who's a projector. Tell me that. And we intellectualize this piece and don't tap into the deeper. The deeper meaning of this is being led by desire. The deeper meaning of this is stopping looking outside of ourselves for all the answers and knowing exactly what is right for There is nothing more powerful than this work for you for anyone because when you are internally led and you know exactly what the right decision for you is and it can be scary it can be scary as shit sometimes but when you know from deep inside of you and it doesn't matter what joe blow says it doesn't matter what they think you are powerful and your magnetism turns on and what happens is you naturally start to decondition yolanda And I agree about following your intuition, even when there's no logic attached to it. Absolutely. And oftentimes it won't be like, that's the thing. The sacral is not a straight line. Like it will make no sense sometimes. Like, especially with like my computer example, that made zero sense. I had no idea I was going to sign up for a mastermind like a week later and need all of that money. Needs a bad word, but you know what I mean. And so the, the, the sacral isn't going to play in that logic, but it is going to take you exactly where you need to go because you are divinely led. So tap back into that trust, tap back into that trust of, I decide I'm trusting. I decide that I know what my body said because I'm practiced in my yes and no's and I felt it. I felt the power of that yes come through me. And this yes is really fucking scary and it makes zero sense. And I feel like I could die. But when I pull my consciousness down here, I know that it's right for me. There's nothing more powerful because everybody tells you, you need this strategy and you need to speak like this and you need to have a two week launch period and you need to pull in this client and you need to to do this to woo your husband but when you are internally led it doesn't matter what question you're asking it doesn't matter what you want it is leading you there's nothing more powerful than that right (laughs) and i swear some people in the coaching industry don't want you to tap into this power because they want you to need that thing that next thing that next thing outside of yourself. But when you are tapped in deeply, it's not about searching for things that we are missing. It's about getting the things we want because we want them. And when you make empowered buying decisions from that place of not having any sort of lack or any sort of need, but I just want to be in this person's energy, people will make the same decisions for you because we're all mirrors. So when you are tapped in and you have that that power of I know who I am, I know what I want, and nobody outside of me can tell me I need something and me believe them, then people believe the same about you and people want to be in your energy and people want to calibrate to that level of personal power because they feel it from you. They feel that you're not in need. They feel that you're not in lack. They feel that you're in desire. And when you are in desire, people desire you. Mic drop. (laughs) And that was powerful. Who is vibing with this? I'm so excited. It's so powerful. So really tap into that trust. And you can, when, when it comes to being in your head versus in your body, you can feel it. I can feel when I am up here because I am nervous 
and I can feel when I'm done here. It's like yoga where you are working to spread your awareness through your whole body. You can feel where you're feeling, your, where you're in your body, right? You can feel that. Like I can feel when I'm playing up here because I can feel like my consciousness there. And I'm going to do an exercise with you guys in just a minute. And it's going to blow your minds. I'm so excited. It's going to blow your minds. Oh, I channeled it in the bathtub last night. And I like almost started crying because it's such a freaking vibe. But it's also sexy. <laughs> sexy crying. <laughs> but you're going to pull that consciousness to this area. That is how you, you, all you have to do is think about your gut. And when you start to feel into the subtle nuances of like, do I feel the fabric against my stomach? Do I feel cold or hot? You pull your consciousness outside of your brain. So when you feel yourself getting stuck in your head, that's like the microscope, right? Where that example I had earlier, where you're pulling your consciousness and you're looking through this microscope and it's like, how can I broaden my awareness? You broaden your awareness within your body too. That's how you get out of your head. This exercise is going to blow your guys' mind. You can tell when you're in your head versus when you're in your body. And a lot of people who have an open head and open ajna, you actually feel pressure there. You'll feel like, and, and I, if you have an open head and open ajna, I'm sure you can attest to this. When you're up in your head, like it just feels like, ah, oh, it's like caving in on you. There is so much to think about. And what you'll do is you'll spiral you'll spiral. And if you have the, the defined head or defined ajna or the, the both, what's going to happen is you're going to really feel like that logic is the truth. You're going to feel like, oh, wait, this is true. It's getting back into the body. Getting back into the body. Isabella, seriously, I just have pressure in my head. Yes. I will go from like being so happy to just having a headache. If I'm stuck in my head. Let's talk about being desire led. Okay. This is a huge, huge trap for gens and many gens. Is saying I get the desire when. I get to desire it when. when like conditional desire, right? I get what I want when I have enough money. I get clients when I, when I, like, it's, it's just conditional, right? I get to decorate my apartment and enjoy it when I have this much in my bank account. Putting our desires on hold for a logical reason. I will set the boundary when. I will get rid of the client who is unaligned when I sign another one. This is a big problem. And this is a big piece of conditioning because when you are holding on to your desires as a thing for later and making it conditional, you have pulled yourself up into your head. I get to enjoy my life when I'm making 10K months. I get to launch a program once I've learned a bunch more knowledge and putting your desires on hold. If you get a desire, it is divinely led, right? The universe doesn't tell you, like you obviously have to be embodied in your work, but learning everything about a certain subject isn't going to serve your clients more. I could tell you every single thing about human design that I know, and there's still more that I don't know. But if I had decided to put this masterclass on hold because I didn't know every single thing about everything, I would have shut down my desire. My aura would not be expanded. And this would have been a conditional desire. So where are you placing condition conditionality? Conditions? Conditionality on your desires. We're either making up words or I just like know everything about the dictionary. Isabella, thanks for sharing that. I feel like when that happens to me, headaches. Yep. Stacia, yes, I have an open head, open ash. <laughs> yep. 
multiple split definition. Yes. Oh my gosh. Cool. So I have an open head, open Ajna and open heart. I do have a defined G center, but yes, all of those things come into play and those open center patterns, they're going to get you. You're going to be like, I, I need to know more. I need to know more. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I have to prove myself. I don't know who I am. I don't know if this is right for me. Those things are going to come into play as well. Ivana, my husband used to have that that one because he was in special ed, so it was conditioned that he had to learn a lot first. Yes, absolutely. But once he worked through it, so much shifted. And that's the thing, like with the learning more and the knowing more, that's part of why I talked about intellectually intellectualizing human design and intellectualizing embodiment. It's like when we really look at it and do the work, we realize that we're enough as we are. Our personal life experiences, if you're alive, you have so much freaking knowledge. You have so much freaking experience. You don't always have to know more to positively impact people, to host programs, to have a good relationship, to be worthy of money. Like there is no knowing more to be worthy of money. So where are you placing that conditionality on your desire? Yes, yes. Okay, we're going to go into how it actually all works and how it ties together and how you actually get to call in your desires. Eckhart Tolle said in a program, I bought, you probably know more than I do. Yes, he's absolutely right, Eckhart Tolle. I think I'm reading a book by him right now. But yeah, absolutely. We all probably know so, so much. And so what will happen is, and this is something that happened for me, like even though I am in a deep process of deconditioning, the thought came up that people might already know everything I'm teaching in this masterclass. They might already know. Open heart center, unworthiness. We worked through that shit real fast because no matter what, even if you guys have heard this information hundreds of times from different people, my voice will activate the right people. I know that. I am deeply tapped into that truth. But the conditioning still comes up. You went to more seminars than me. Yeah. Right? It's so funny. Like these people, we think that they, we put people on pedestals, but it's so funny because we all know so much. It's not about knowing more. It's about being more and being tapped in because your desires don't exist, exist so you can do something before you get the desire, right? Like I have the desire to host this masterclass. I don't have to go learn more before I host this masterclass. I don't have to prove that I'm worthy before I host this masterclass. I don't have to have my first 15K month before I host this masterclass. It's on its way. It's on its way. Okay. So how this all works is when you are tapped in, when you are leading through desire, this is the power, right? Because when you say yes, and when you say no, you are filled with energy when it is in alignment for you. And this is a huge piece because with, with this, the more you are responding, whether it is a yes or a no, it is filling you with energy. And this is the thing. So many generators and manifesting generators have a thing with no because a big piece of the way that the world is set up is that we are in shoulds because people co-opt our energy. They co-opt our energy. And so what happens is we do a lot of things we don't actually want to do. But when you say no, I'm sure every single one of you guys have felt this, is that a no will fill you with energy. Your yeses and nos are just as valuable as each other, right? And so when we are saying yes to everything, whether it is what, and when we are saying yes to things that are in alignment, we fill ourselves with energy. When we are saying no to things, that are in alignment, we fill ourselves with energy. But when we say yes to things that are out of alignment, we drain our sacral. When we say no to things that should have been a yes, we drain our sacral. Both our yeses and our noes are just as powerful as each other. But when you are ignoring the pieces that are out of alignment and saying the opposite, that's when your sacral starts to lose energy. And this is why there's burnout. 
with generators and manifesting generators. This is why there's exhaustion. And we, when you know human design, you're like, why am I burnt out? I do not understand. The sacral is one of the most powerful motors in desire in, in human design. It's the most powerful motor. And so if it's supposed to be filling me up with energy, why am I burnt out? Why am I always frustrated? It's because you are saying the wrong thing. You are letting these little no's stack up. You are saying yes to things that should be no's. And I have done this. I have been through burnout. I have been through severe burnout because I let shoulds get in the way. And what happens is like I, I also do like virtual assistant services. I'm the most many gen of all the many gens. I do graphic design, I do human design, I do coaching, I do virtual assistant services. I love all of them. But occasionally, what used to happen when I was not grounded and rooted in my boundaries for me not to say no to somebody else, but because it was a no for me, I would say yes. I'd say, oh, okay, you want me to add cute fonts to every single one of the posts that I'm posting for you this week? Yes, absolutely. Oh, you would like me to add stories into your, into your package? Yes, absolutely. Be these tests were five minutes. Each one of them was five minutes. I'm like, oh, okay, what's five more minutes? What's five more minutes? But that's the thing. When you are doing something out of alignment for you, because you should do it, or it's just five minutes, you are playing up here. And what happens is five minutes in a no for a sacral being can feel like an hour. It will drain you. So it's looking at where have you said yes to things that are actually a no, because you are the power. You are the yes and the no, and you get to go clean that shit up. You absolutely get to go clean it up. You don't have to feel trapped by the yeses and the noes that you have said that were wrong in the past. You get to change your mind. You get to step into your power and say, we can't do this anymore. Because as you clean those things up, you will fill yourself with energy because you are going back to the pure desire of what your sacral wants. Is this resonating with anybody? Do we have any yes women <laughs> in here? I used to be one. I used to be one. I used to say yes to so many things because I was scared. What if they decided to drop the contract because I wouldn't use these fancy fonts? But when I rooted into my truth, if they left because of that, they weren't for me anyway. It's not worth shitting on yourself. It's not worth shitting on yourself. If your, if your desires are divinely led, your no's are divinely led as well. And when you keep saying yes to things that should be no, you start to live life out of alignment. So where can you clean that stuff up? This is my favorite part. We're going to talk about your aura. So your aura as a generator and a manifesting generator, our aura pulls shit in. It's like the magnet, right? We are magnets. And when we are in our power, when we are in our desire, when we are loving life, we are pulling everything in that we desire, which is so powerful, right? Because as you are in alignment, your aura expands. Your aura expands. And so as we push our aura out, people feel us. When you live life in alignment and you are lit up by life, people feel you. And so what happens is the need to force things, the need to just do it, the need to make it happen. It's not there. It's literally not there. And what happens is misalignment causes your aura to be repelling. You cannot fake your aura. You guys can feel my aura right now. 
It doesn't matter if you are a hundred thousand miles away. You can feel my aura. You can feel my aura in the words that I say online. And this is why you will go through so many, you will see so many courses that say you have to follow this formula. You have to speak to their pain points. Point A, B, and C should be this. Then you should talk about your program. Don't work for so many people because there is misalignment within their aura. Right? And so when you are in alignment and you are tapped into desire, what happens is your aura expands and people feel you. People want you. People come into your world. And when you are living in misalignment, you have to clean that stuff up because people will feel that lack energy. People will feel that need energy. It will come through in your video. It will come through in your words. It will come through in people just thinking about you because it is all energy, right? It is all neutrinos. Neutrinos are information that is micro data that you can feel. People feel you, people feel your aura. So you could have the most perfect post and say the most perfect thing. But if you are in misalignment with your human design, your aura is repelling. And then the coolest thing is you could fuck it up all along the way. You could say the wrong word. You could stutter on the live. Queen of stuttering on the live here. And people will still buy. Because when people feel you, they buy from you. They want to be in your energy. They want to be in your world. Your aura is communicating the things underneath. And this is why people will say and launch in a perfect way and may not get any signups because there's misalignment under the surface. So how can you clean up your misalignment? Is anybody feeling this? This is the coolest thing in the world to me. Because if you cannot fake your aura, you get to get into alignment. You get to get in alignment with your yeses and your noes and really start to tap in. And then how nice is it to know that when you are in alignment, you cannot fuck it up. Even if my post misses speaking to your pain points, I'm fine. Even if I forgot a huge point on this masterclass, I am fine. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters who you're being while you're doing it. So expanding your aura involves doing the deconditioning, tapping into your yeses and your noes and listening to them and cleaning up all of the noes or the yeses that should have been noes and the noes that should have been yeses, getting into that. And when you tap into your power for you, it expands. It expands your desires. And this is why you will see for so many gens and many gens, the better it gets, the better it gets. And the worse it gets, the worse it gets. Because as you start to go into that repelling place of I should, I have to, things start to fall into misalignment. So the worse it gets, the worse it gets. And so many people will hit burnout. They will hit this place of, I've built a business that I hate. I'm in a relationship with somebody who I'm not even supposed to be in a relationship with. This nine to five is draining my soul. But the better it gets, the better it gets too. So you get to shift that. And when you are leading your life by desires, your whole life becomes a yes. Even your no's are a yes. Your no's feel so good and they light you up. Every time somebody gets in my inbox and asks me for design services, I only offer design services to my high level clients now. I say no in the nicest way and it feels so good because design work is something I should do. I'm good at it. I'm one of the best, but I don't love it. It doesn't light me on fire like it does for doing it for my high-end clients. So that no gives me energy. That no is a yes to me having more space. That no is a yes to me doing more of what I enjoy because every no is a yes. And when you have a problem with no's, there's shit to clean up there. 
Because if you have a problem with no's as a generator or a manifesting generator, you are on a road to burnout. You are on a road to people pleasing. Your no's are yeses. Your yeses are yeses. It's all just yes. Amy, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters who you're being while you're doing it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so you need to love what you're doing or you're shutting down your aura. Are you guys ready? So I'm going to lead you through this visualization. I need to know if you're ready in the comments. Tell me you're ready. If you're driving, do not do this. <laughs> I don't want you to <laughs> close your eyes while you're driving. You're doing great. <laughs> Focus on your driving. But if you are in a place where you can safely type in the chat, are you ready to do this visualization? Because we're going to tap into your sacral power. Let me know, let me know. I'll wait. Your no's are yeses, your yeses are yeses. It's all yes, yes. Nope, you don't have to lie down. All you have to do is close your eyes and get into the vibes. Okay, everybody's ready. They're coming through. Comments are always just a little bit delayed, so it's so funny because I'm like, oh wait, oh wait. I'm here to respond. <laughs> Universe, serenade me <laughs> with with the late responses. And that's the thing. When you're a gen or a mini gen, they come to you. You get to wait. It's sexy to wait. <laughs> it's such a vibe. All right. Put your beautiful meditation music in the background because Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Safe and not driving. Yes, anybody who's driving, ignore this. <laughs> I'll find you. <laughs> okay, everybody, close your eyes. Take three deep breaths. Breathe in deeply. Fill it, let it fill your body. breathe out completely really feel your consciousness going to your whole body breathe in deeply exhale even longer really tapping into your body pulling your consciousness out of your head and into your body One more deep breath, feeling your nervous system calm down. So you take the fullest breath in and then breathe out. Now we are grounded. I want you to feel roots going down through your feet into the earth into Mother Earth. I want you to feel the grounding of the soil as the roots go deeper into the earth. I want you to feel how supported you are. From these roots, I want you to pull the earth energy up to your sacral area. Sacral is the area right below your belly button. I want you to feel the energy gather there. I want you to feel this area light up with an orange red color. Then I want you to feel a string from your sacral. Go all the way up through all your chakras, up through the top of your head and into the universe. This is a silver thread. I want you to feel it connect with the center of the universe. And I want you to feel that energy come back down through this thread into your sacral, through the top of your head, 
through your chakras into your sacral. In your sacral, you're going to feel the cosmic and earth energy swirling. And as you feel it swirling, you see the color become brighter. That deep red orange, the place of desire. Every breath in, you are pulling both cosmic energy and earth energy to your sacral space. And every breath out, your sacral expands. I want you to feel your sacral expanding past your body. With every breath out, it is filling your aura and pushing it out. And every breath in, it is getting stronger and brighter. Pushing your aura further out this red and orange energy. You feel it expanding larger and larger as you breathe out, as large as your body, beyond your body, three feet out, five feet out, as big as the room that you are in. And as soon as it is this big, and you feel the power, and you feel the red-orange desire energy. I want you to feel everything you desire. The clients, the money, the relationship, the freedom. Whatever it is that you desire deeply within your sacral, I want you to feel those things. I want you to feel those things coming towards your large aura. Your sacral energy is swirling within your aura, pulling these things in. No logic, just pure desire. You feel the power of these desires within your sacral and it turns your magnet on. And these things, all attached by strings are pulled towards you. And you just get to be. Feel them. Feel how they make you feel deep within your sacral. How these desires make you feel. Your desires are giving you life. And as they pull in towards you, notice how easy it is. How good it feels. The pure, unbridled desire. This is how your sacral works. This is how your aura works. This is the full power of tapping into your desire. The people feel you. The money wants to come to you. The relationship wants to come to you. You are attracting it all. Sit in this desire for just another moment. Feel it deep within the space under your belly button. Feel everything coming to you. And it is done. I want you to picture the red orange energy of your aura coming back into your sacral. Swirling back into your sacral, your aura stays as expanded as it was. The energy of your sacral is just going into your sacral area and being pulled back in. The power is not dimming, it is just being condensed to the area of your sacral. The power of your aura remains. 
And as you pull it into your sacral, I want you to feel that light remain on. The string disconnects from the universe and the roots from your feet go back into your feet. And both energies pull into your sacral. And that is the power of your desire. Feel that for just a moment. Then rub your fingertips together, start to blink your eyes open and come back when you are ready. How was that? Did you feel it? Did you feel the power of your desire? Do you feel how powerful your magnet is? But you don't have to do anything. You're not pulling the strings. Your sacral is doing it for you. Everything you desire is also seeking you. Oh, Pamela. Yeah, good. That Pamela, that releasing is so, so good. It's so, so powerful. Even, even that in and of itself is a process of deconditioning because you're feeling the fullness of your power. Nazi, yes. Yep. Feeling that full power. That is your activation. That is what pulls things in. That is how people feel you. That is how everything you want feels you. Hi, Rachel. So good to see you. Gorgeous. Yes, so much clearing. So good. Okay, the last piece of this. Now that you've felt your desire and felt the power of your sacral and the power of being leaned back as things come towards you, unbridled desire, right? Unbridled means not attached to conditions. That's something you get to tap into. That's something you get to continue to tap into. That's something you can tap into when you're lost in your head. When you're starting to play with logic, when you're starting to play with shoulds, when you're not sure what the right answer for you is, when the decision you're making is scary, tapping back into that power because that is the power of trust. That is the power of having your internal guidance system turned on to where it doesn't matter if it's scary because you trust that you are being led. So when it comes to conditioning, the most important thing to realize is that not trusting yourself is the biggest piece of conditioning we have. As generators and manifesting generators, when we question our yeses, it is the thing that is going to shut our auras down. It is the thing that is going to turn us from the magnet into something that is repelling. And the things we want won't be able to come to us if we are not trusting what is a yes for us. So what yeses do you have in your life right now that you have made a no? That you have made, I am not good enough for this yes yet. I do not have enough money for this yet. I do not feel safe enough for this yet. This feels too scary for me. Yes, but I should be doing this. What are the yeses that you felt deep within you that are scary, but you know they're a yes? Look into those pieces. Look into those pieces. Because if you are shitting on yourself, it is going to drain you. And when you are undrained, you are unsatisfied. And when you are unsatisfied, you are not tapping into the energy signature of satisfaction because I'm sure every single one of you felt it during that meditation. That 
was the feeling of satisfaction, of knowing that everything you seek is seeking you. Everything you want is being pulled in and there isn't something you should be doing to get them in. It's just you. It's just your power. It's just your sacral. It's just your magnet. How is that all feeling? This is going to remain live in the group. So you guys can come back to that meditation. When you are feeling disconnected, when you feel far from your desires, because desire is your power. Being tapped in, being led is your power. And now I'm going to tell you guys about a special way you guys can continue in this energy. I am launching the most exciting thing. It is called Uh Uh-huh, Uh-uh. And just in that energy, you can tell what this is about. This is about sacral embodiment for generators and manifesting generators. This isn't about doing more. This is about being more. This is about tapping into the internal trust and learning how to work with your sacral. So in a way where you never feel like you are looking outside of yourself. We are going into the deconditioning. We are going into actual practice and application of tapping into your sacral. We're going into the power of yeses and nos. We are going into manifesting. We are going into aura expansion. We are also going into boundaries. And these things all together are going to light you on fire in a good way. In a good way. Because I remember what it felt like when I thought my sacral was broken. I remember what it felt like feeling like this stuff doesn't work for me or feeling like I get it kind of, but being deeply embodied in this work is the purpose of uh uh uh-huh, uh-huh. Because when you're deeply embodied in this work, you are the magnet. It doesn't matter what you want. You saw that during the meditation. It doesn't matter what you want to pull into you. You are pulling it in. Your sacral is doing the work. So it's about learning and leaning back into that trust. Getting into the power of your sacral, getting into the power of your desires without conditionality, without the conditioning, deconditioning, pulling it back and going back into, I desire it, therefore it is. Because alignment will only get you so far if it's out of alignment with your design because this is your genetic blueprint. This is your aura. This is how people feel you. This is how desires feel you. The more expanded your aura is, the more you call in. Yeah, your sacral is not broken. And I have felt that way. I have felt that way. So no more push, no more forcing, no more pushing. That's what this is about. This is a six week live program. There's gonna be an opportunity for questions and answers, but this is really going to be a tight knit community where we are going into the embodiment of your sacral because I remember life without my sacral. I remember working the 15 hour days and feeling like I had no control over my life. I remember the shoulds and now the life that I live like, it's insane. I I work like four hours a day. I watch Vikings half the day. I do my mindset work. I get to go on walks. And this is what I desire. Just because you're a generator or a manifesting generator, it does not mean you need to work 24-7. You have a lot of energy. Spend that energy on the things you love. Spend that energy on the freedom and the time and the naps. Because projectors do not have a co-op on naps. We get to take naps. I love my naps. <laughs> 
It's about really getting in tune with that alignment to your human design. I am so, so excited. So this program, I have to look at my pricing. So we are an early bird until the 24th. And this is going to be early bird, pay in full of 555. There's a payment plan as well. And then after that, it goes up to 777 for the people who need more time. But you know in your sacral if this is right for you. You'll feel that possibility. You'll feel that rise. You'll feel that expansion. You'll feel that like, ooh, yeah, my sacral wants me to get in tap with it. My higher self is leading me on the path of human design. There is also a VIP option. The VIP option includes a human design reading for me. My human design readings are usually $250 for 90 minutes. This is about $111 for 60 minutes extra. So the VIP option is $688. And this is a really powerful way to tap into what is uniquely for you within this program and working with your open head and your open Ajna or your open heart or your open G center or whatever conditioning is coming in because conditioning can come from your open and your closed centers. But this is a way to get that personalized experience within this program as well. I'm either opening three or five VIP spaces. I haven't decided yet tapping into sacral, but that will go up as early bird expires as well. I will make a post in the group right after this. I would love to welcome you into this. If this masterclass is what's right for you and you feel complete, amazing. I have loved having you guys here so, so much. This work is the power. This work is the power of tapping back into yourself and getting into alignment and expanding your aura and getting everything you want coming to you. No more forcing. And if you want to come into uh-huh, uh-uh, I would be so, so honored to have you. I will post everything you need to know in the group. And this has been such a fun launch because this has been one out of pure desire, right? Because we get to launch and do life and do business in the way we want. So there has been no sales page. I broke the rules with how long I wanted to promote this masterclass. You get to do it your way and people get to feel you. It's not about a formula. It's being tapped in. So I love you guys all so, so much. Early bird for uh-huh, uh-huh. I can't wait to show you guys the branding. Oh my God, you guys are gonna die. Please just like it for the branding. Like it for the branding. This was my vision from my sacral. But I will post all of the details, all of the payment links, all of the pay in full details. And I would love to have you guys in there. I love you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.